in review, the hypothalamus secretes corticotrophin releasing factors, which stimulates the pituitary gland to release adrenocorticotropic hormone. And that, in turn, is released into the body and stimulates the release of cortisol from the adrenal glands. And so animals can become glucocorticoid deficient, and namely cortisol deficient, at any level, whether it's secondary to a loss of hypothalamic release of corticotropin releasing factor, whether the ACTH is not released from the pituitary gland, the end result is that the adrenal glands are not stimulated to release cortisol in response to stressors and baseline uh, endogenous cortisol simply to maintain homeostasis. And so typical Addison's disease is where there's an immune-mediated destruction of the adrenal cortex. Typically, it's a lymphocytic, plasmacytic, immune-mediated destruction and ultimately results in both a loss of glucocorticoids as well as the mineralocorticoid aldosterone. Typically, more than 90% of the cortical layers must be functionally destroyed before we start seeing clinical signs in our veterinary patients. Sometimes hypoadrenic corticism is due to iatrogenic causes or natural destruction. For example, if we've administered lysodrine in treating uh, Cushing's to give ketosconazole, or if an animal has been on long-term prednisone or dexamethasone or any exogenous glucocorticoid use, and we abruptly discontinue it, and the body has been down-regulated and can't release cortisol in response to stress. More rarely, primary hypoadrenocorticism or Addison's disease has been associated with different types of fungal infections, such as histoplasmosis and coxoidomycosis, trauma, vitamin K antagonist rodenticide toxicity with adrenal hemorrhage, as well as various forms of neoplasia, including lymphoma. And that becomes very important when considering Addison's disease in cats. 